Hi, this is Amanda Paints LLC. Um, this is video two of the uh, distressed um, finished mahogany buffet. And um, I use uh, General Finishes high performance semi gloss. Um, it was something that I had in here to put a clear coat on. Um, generally in fine finish, you could put anywhere from two to four coats of clear, um, light sanding in between. Uh, this is, this is my first clear coat and, uh, the grain's not raised too bad. Um, there's a little bit of raised grain, um, I you'd normally just take like a soft sanding sponge 320 to kind of just buff that out between coats and then you start getting like that nice cabinetry finish um but i'm actually gonna take advantage of the raised grain a little bit here um you can see the two drawers on the left i applied a white glaze and I want that white glaze down into the wood grain, um, but I do want to bring just a little bit of that darkness back. I can't do a lot, but I want to do some. And how I'm going to do that is after I glaze and the glaze dries, then I'm going to do my sanding in between coats and that'll take off some of the white haze on the top and give me back a little bit of my darker color but then still leave that white glaze in the crevices and stuff where i want it um i'm really happy with this so far i'm excited i'm kind of picturing putting some white feet on the bottom uh, white handles and then it has glass doors um, that go in the opening I think that I may frost those um, so that you can not see into it and I'll probably pick and choose around um, whether I kind of want to continue the same color of gray on the inside um, I'll probably use a chalk paint just to get something on in there quick um, but just to keep that kind of like, uh, I don't know, washed up beachy look, um, I think, I think that'll be very pretty. Um, while I had some of that gray stain out, um, this is another piece of furniture, um, that I've had in my studio for a very long time and, um, I, I've had a sheet on it and both of these have just been tables. Um, I may miss the table space. Um, it's unbelievable, uh, how many things I, I painted on top of these, but, um, I'm glad to get them out. As you can see, I've been organizing. I got a, a plaster delivery for my scaliola. And I cleared off some shelves there. Um, I got a delivery coming next week uh, with pigments and additives and things. I'm really excited about. Um, but anyways, they needed a home. So all that space has been cleaned out. And we'll get this furniture done. And then I will have a completely empty shop. And um, that's a good goal. It always feels good when you get everything out so um here i hand painted um some blue jays uh they're rare but we do have these here in montana they're kind of in the lower elevation um i saw one the other day at a client's house they had some bird feeders out and it flew up it's kind of neat and um just put kind of some twigs and things and um some orange uh, leaves. I I have these old uh, vintage couch cushions that are kind of the color of the 
orange in the leaves that I think I'll use for a backing on this. You can see it sits up in that um, kind of that got the feet. That's the bottom of it. This piece uh, I got at a charity event. Um, someone, it was originally, I'm, I'm sure this was once the most beautiful piece. Um, when I bought it, I could see there was just a little bit of an outline of a, of a hand painted design in the wood, but somebody had, uh, stripped it off and, um, never put a new finish on it. Um, they sanded it with a heavy grit and left swirlies all over it and kind of put a, some stain on it. And I was just like, ugh. I love the trunk um, underneath that yellow piece of tape. Um, there's an old keyhole. If this trunk isn't at least 100 years old, um, I'll be surprised. But what was done to it was a disgrace. Like, I would never hand paint birds and stain an old beautiful trunk like this. I would probably try to make it as original as I could. But somebody had already gone through and destroyed it for me so I decided to just have fun um, but I did want to make it old again and I, I broke a rule um, I ended up using some oil stain I put the gray stain on the trunk and then I sanded and distressed to break that up a little bit um, I kind of wanted this to look like just super old, been sitting out in the weather. Um, and then I did a sample for a client a while ago um, with some uh, um, old masters wood stain. And you can put you can put like waterborne and oil stains together, but before you clear coat, um, you need to let everything dry out for a good three days. And um, the only reason that I'm using the oil stain, I could get this effect with waterborns, is because I just wanted to get rid of um, the stain that I used uh, for a client. Um, it's a mixture of uh, Puritan pine and um, golden oak and... Uh, early American, um, kind of a one-to-one -one mix, just really something thrown together. Uh, like I said, just trying to get rid of things, um, so they don't, uh, go into the landfill and stuff. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fun piece. Um, I think I'll put another clear coat on it and then, um, I think I'll probably do a dark glaze. I think I'd like to richen this up a little bit more and then probably clear coat it again. This I'll probably use a flat clear coat. It needs to be a flat surface. Um, it's gonna go down in my basement and it's going to uh, hold my camping gear. <laughs> so I need some storage for for our camping gear and um, so back to this piece um, we this is what I mixed for the white glaze again it's my motto we're using using up what's in our in our shop left over from jobs and you don't really when you do kind of like this white glaze on furniture you don't really want a true white it tends to be too gleaming um so i toned it down quite a bit here um it this is kind of a an off white um let's see how it holds i don't know if you can see probably actually could have gone a little darker um with it even but it's not a true white and so uh that house and trim paint that's left over from painting the trim work outside of my own house and then uh the clear base 
And I just kind of mix this by eye. I put a, a touch of the Van Tech brown um, just to darken it up a little bit. You generally do a four to one ratio. Um, I did more of a six to one ratio, six clear base to one um, paint. And then I just literally put drops of the Van Dyke Brown um, to make my color. And, and then I just kind of ended up with this uh, kind of a, I wouldn't say it's a cream. It's a little bit more on the tan side. It's got a little bit of gray in it, um, but just an off-white. And I did want it warm. I didn't want it cool. And... Uh, Let's see, we'll come over here and we'll we'll glaze a drawer for you. So So my tools for glazing like this, um I like chip brushes. Let's put put a pair of gloves on. And a rag and I have one little artist brush because um, sometimes in the crevices sometimes you just want a little bit more character and I'll get the the general of the glaze on so that uh, well, you can see what I'm doing here. Just watch and learn. And then pull it across. Got my duster brush. I showed that to you in the last video about just kind of brushing things back and forth with the wood grain. And so after I did that, there's not quite enough glaze left in some of the um the distressing that i use so i'm just gonna dot back a little bit of the glaze like in some of these bird holes just getting it down there i just want to see some character come out of maybe just a slight drag and then uh and then i'll take my duster brush and I'll just kind of pull that down just to soften that. And then that, that just uh, makes things come out, gives it a little bit of character and artistic touch. And uh, I'll bring it around here so you can see that more closely, how that turned out. So you can see just that little bit of a of a dash of white glaze um, to bring in just a hint of character. That's all we want. So I'll set this back down and let me get out one of the dryer drawers and uh, we'll sand it some. Well, I have a buddy that is going to beautifully repair that for me. 
and we'll be just fine. And that's the great thing about doing a distressed piece of furniture. Because if you drop it and say, okay, see, the drawer is okay. We'll survive that one. We'll put that in bloopers videos. Talk about my grief. I'll bring out one more drawer so that I think I got to slide it back in so that you can see the difference of the uh, what we did here. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, you can see that. So I have a sanding sponge fine and that's what I'm going to use to buff and get back some of my color. I can hear see a lot of that color coming back. I don't know if it's visible there for you, but I think if I put this back in to the next one, it'll show, kind of give me back some of that darkness of the corners. And then I'm also buffing my clear coat. So it'll be ready for a final coat. I'll probably put two more coats on this just to get a nice build. It doesn't really need it though. Oh yeah, I like that. Uh, maybe you can see that color change. Maybe you can't, but we'll get it so it feels nice and smooth. That's ready. It's pretty. I'll sand this one. Really, this door will be okay. <laughs> kind of embarrassing. I was kind of excited to share this video, so. But at least maybe it'll. Something about that. Can't have protection. just takes just enough of that white glaze away. It makes it so I can control it, so I can sand it as much as I want, get that underneath color to come back a little. Oops. That's nice and smooth. Oh, that feels nice. So hopefully the camera picks this up a little bit. I don't know if it will. I think some, yeah. You can see where the, let it focus here. See that the glaze is just down kind of in the, the white grains and the distressing. And then you get some of that gray and natural brown coming out of the piece. And then I, I think, you know, you have a really nice driftwood effect here. So, yeah. I like it. We'll get that drawer fixed. We got some pin nails and stuff. You can see this one still has a little bit of a haze of the white glaze on. We'll get that sanded down and get some of our character back here like in here um so that's it for this video and uh i'll finish uh glazing this up and put another clear coat on and uh maybe we'll talk about
chalk painting or frosting the glass. It's been a long time since I frosted the glass. It might be as comical as me busting that drawer. Um, but uh, that's real life and that's what these videos are about is uh, being in a real life paint shop. Um, so I'm not paid to talk about any of these products. The products that I show, I use them because I like them or because they're cheap and accessible and it's what I have. But I do want to share uh, my artwork. My artwork is available for sale on my website, amandapaintsllc.weebly.com. Um, I've been taking some classes on setting up a professional e-commerce store um, where you can have the shopping cart and the shipping is all worked in the price and all. But for now, I just have some pictures and some prices before shipping and depending on where you live, I'll have to personally get a shipping quote for you. Um, but this painting is for sale. It's uh, Dust Till Dawn. And um, I'll walk up. It's a, it's all recycled material left over from jobs. Um, the mountains in the middle are faux burl wood. Um, that's an actual automotive technique for doing um, dashboards and old cars. Um, it, that's kind of fun. And then the top is just kind of a a faux fantasy marble for for the sunset sky and the ground is another just kind of faux stone. Um, let's see if I can get this pretty good realistic burrow wood. All done with paint, all done by hand. Same here. All done with paint, all by, done by hand. Um, it has a good texture to it. I really like this piece. I like how it feels. Goes around the corners, all the way around. Done nice. So, yeah. So this piece is for sale. I'll say I like the sheen on it. So I got a. I sprayed the uh, the wood, so it looks like a nice sprayed fine finish wood, and then. Uh, um, this is just, it's a, got a troweled wax on it. Um, it's got good texture, nice sheen, but, uh, yeah, so Dust Till Dawn is for sale on my website, uh, plus shipping wherever you might live, uh, mandapaintsllc.weebly.com. Uh, we'll see you next round with, uh, the gray, um, buffet. Have a good day.